Anyhow, this is, I'm doing two for one, so I'm going to talk about both. They're um, pretty similar, but with some distinct differences. I am doing both English 100, which I've taught several times before, and English 393, which is the, the fully hybrid. And it's my first time through it this semester as well, in a regular semester. So I'm going to talk about 100 first, even though it's session two, it's lightly hybridized, is the operative phrase they want. So my big problem is, has been for a while the research paper. I ask for something on books and brains, is what I call it. Anything to do with language, literature, learning. A lot of times people are interested in a mental disorder they have or someone they know has. And you know, I like that because I'm into the whole metacognitive aspect of writing. Writing is thinking. It's thinking on paper or on screen. So um, what I do now is I have something in Blackboard Discussion Board that prompts them to do some exploring online. For summer, it's going to be pretty fast-paced within the first couple weeks. Main semester, it's more spread out. We can talk about things a little more. And it's a structured assignment, so different targets to investigate each time. First thing, it's very limited. It's saying, hi, go to Radiolab, listen to an episode, summarize it. And for all of them, besides just summarizing, they post, what are you curious about? What drew you to it? What are you now curious about? What else do you want to learn? And that's because I'm trying to get this whole spirit of inquiry that we always hope that we can inspire in the students. So the reflective questions to get them into some questioning mode for the research paper, when we go to add scholarly sources, they're not just parroting things. They're always ideally in that mode of asking questions right from the start. The discussion board is so that they do see each other's posts, they respond, and they do get prompts for, you know, they get points for responding to each other as well. Also, I can ask questions just like, hey, you know, so what did you think about this? Or, you know, did they cover such and such? As if they're just bloggers, I'm happen, you know, I happen to be reading them, and yeah, maybe their grammar's not that great yet, but that's okay. You know, and instead of being, I am the teacher, I'm a fellow inquirer. So I was thinking about doing adaptive release for the discussion board zone, but I decided not to for this one, partially because it's fast. This is going to be over the first couple weeks, um, and my responding mode might be a little slower. But I do have on the assignment sheet that I will give a little, um, that there's a zone where I can give points. So if I make it something else adaptive release based on this, such as if you complete these, then you get the research paper assignment faster if you want to do that, I have that option. Um, so the main assignment sheet, I know it's a doc, but it's because I normally hand these out in class and the doc is there as a backup. I like to hand things out on colored paper so they stand out. Oh, there we go. So. Okay, no, so, but I, I hate it when I can't print it out on colored paper. I want to make it special if I'm doing an assignment sheet so it stands out. And I'm like, all right, do you have your blue assignment sheet? Do you have the green assignment sheet? Little things like that, you know, seem to click. So this explains, again, what we're doing, why they're doing it. So instead of deciding on a paper in one day, they are working up to it. And I list clearly what each post needs. Title, citation. I give them some clues where to get information on citation because this early in the semester we have not covered that yet. Summary and the curiosity factor. And then for responses, what we need with that. First, an indication of what are you responding to instead of, yeah, that was cool. You know, we need to say, you know, I read that about sleep also and I really had problems last semester. I thought I could do all-nighters and that did not work. And then ideally question for the original, you know, just some good basic message board habits, not just the YouTube, you know, this sucks, this is awesome level of commenting. So the audience for this, I like to specify the audience where writing class is each other and me. So each other, thus casual tone, me. I do run a little bit of spell check. So I've got the deadlines and this one, it's pretty fast paced, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday to get through these four prompts. Um, we are meeting in class on Tuesdays and Thursdays in this, just for a shorter meeting period. So the prompts start out very, descript very prescriptive. Um, find one episode on Radiolab. Find two articles about dealing with information online. Three articles about anything to do with thinking, learning, brains, language, education, neurology, any of those that interest them. They don't need to connect. 
the fourth one, then any of the topics above, just make them connect. They have to have some through line. This is because they should start realizing, hey, I'm interested in sleep and insomnia, and that might be something I want to do for my research paper. So they start finding things with a connection. And the rubric is, I am going to be doing a little thumbs up, giving them one point for seeing it. But they will do, this is something I got from the, English, from the Science of Water presentation, they're going to be grading themselves because part of metacognition is self-reflection. And I know they're going to probably think that they're either really awesome or really not good at all. Yeah, you know, but we'll take, get an idea of how good are they at self-assessment. So I have, here's the um, actual discussion boards. I just linked them all right here with a quick reminder of what's due. And yeah, it is boring, I know. <laughs> so here's the self-evaluation sheet. Again, repeating part of what was on the cover on the assignment sheet. And you know, just give me this quick summary thing. Your favorite post, your favorite post from someone else. Again, having them, even if they weren't responding to each other necessarily, and going for those points. I do want to know that, yes, you did at least read someone else's post there. I have on the original assignment sheet, based on some feedback, oh, based on other feedback, I'm going to add these links as actual links to the deliverable zone, which I didn't have for this. But I do have a sample post from a student responding about the, about, um, the radio lab show about deception. And she connects, you know, how since she's thinking of being a social work major, she found this story of the psychopath very interesting. And also I have a sample of someone responding. So, and a little turn it in for that cover sheet. And that gives me that one concrete gradable item. The rest is more of a casual interaction. So, um, some feedback on this one. Colleague one is include those links, as I mentioned, from that assignment sheet, add them as distinct links. There are things to Tierney Lab, the science section of the, or a science blog on the New York Times, Radio Lab, um, a bunch of other science blogs, um, Freakonomics, just some other interesting blogs where they can use as possible starting points. Um, go in class and show them all of this on day one in Blackboard. I always make the mistake of assuming that students know more about Blackboard than they do. So go through and show them, here's where you go, and this says news responses, and that's where this information is. And this is also the place to go. Discussion boards is another way to get to the discussion board, because I always have a discussion board menu item. Uh, encourage them to draft in Word for the wonders of spell check, and also if you, the network gets weird, you haven't lost everything, because people are like, so I've lost it. Well, did you write it anywhere else? Then yes, you did lose it. Um, and the sample posts, which I've added. Um, so showing how to do the citations, pointing out citation machine. Again, the teacher recommended the handbook, student citation machine. Um, but response, I've used that this semester and also last semester, it's been very positive. It does get them thinking about the topics early. They start to get a sense of what's out there, that the web isn't just for go of goofy stuff, but there's a lot of serious science. And it then just takes another half link to say, all right, they interviewed this guy. I can put this guy's name in the library server and find the actual article this is all based on. So we can build from that. So the next one is 393. That's technical writing. This will meet only on Tuesday mornings. And the problem with this one is we have a really nice textbook, nice handbook. And in the main semester, you have enough time to say, OK, everyone, let's go. And since we're working on instructions, let's look at the section on instructions. But summer, things are fast. So what we're doing is um, partially discussion board, also partially a blog. Again, I've got an assignment sheet with the full details. And first thing is you find some entries which confuse you. Oh, let me I'm going to bring up my handbook. This handbook is not organized in traditional chapters. It is 
everything in the world A to Z. It has lots of indices that group things together, like graphics, pre-writing, audience. But the actual thing is just an alphabetical reference book like that. So first is in one of the chunks, like A through E, find some entries which confuse you. Because no matter how clearly something's explained, you still have to have some questions. And I have a blog for that in the private journal setting. And the reason for that is I can see all of their posts, and I can sort by the authors. And if I just want to see, all right, did so-and-so post anything? And check for that, or just respond. And they can also see anything I post. So if I say, wow, we're having a lot of questions on semicolons, so don't panic. We'll be talking about them in, on Tuesday. Um, Go back. Then we also have discussion board, and this I do have some adaptive release on. So two types of posts I want there. One is an aha. These are slightly older students, so either they already understood something and this is helping them recognize, oh yeah, I used this you know, when I was interviewing for a job. I used these tips, and this was very helpful. Or they're like, you know, I'd always been a little confused about when to use fewer or less. The book explained it. I feel really confident with that now. That's all it is. It's nothing terribly complicated. And once they post one of those, and here we have the A to E, aha, it will then open, um, uh, not in the view that will show. It will open the other one, which has discussion questions. So where I've got some further discussion. And this one's worth a few more points. And that's kind of the carrot to why you want to put the aha post is to get into the discussion board where I ask questions to inspire some other thought, you know, such as, you know, thinking about causation and correlation and making sure we understand the difference. Um, based on some student feedback, I also made that first discussion board, the AHA one, um, is moderated, which I've never done before. And yeah, I've been playing around with a lot of these. And the reason I have that, I had a friend, or I had a student doing a bunch of testing there, is someone pointed out, well, I don't have the book. I'm just going to read what other people posted and just kind of rip off of those. So by doing the moderation and holding them in that queue until after the deadline, then it minimizes people being able to do that. I can still give them the points, which are what the adaptive release takes to unlock the discussion zone. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so what does that take to see? Until I say, until I moderate it and turn it into visible. So now I can set the status on yet another test thread okay. to submit. So you'll wait till, so everybody's initial posting is due by X date. Right. At that point in time, in, but by giving them the points, you will have unlocked them, their ability to get, get to the, the next, next one. one. Right. So they can get to the next one even though they still haven't seen the first things. Right. Okay. So somebody gets it done really early, you could go ahead, they've already got the points, they can participate in the further discussion, discussion board. Exactly. But um, somebody that's going to wait until the bitter end, they're still not going to be able to see all their peers' postings and rip off of those. They've got to do that data. Exactly. Do that yeah. It. So, and this was, I had a great student giving me some feedback who's telling me all the ways he would rip off the system and all the ways he would, you know, try to get by without <laughs> buying the book, which is great. It's, it's putting a lot of time on your end having to go then and touch all of these. It's not as bad as I thought. One thing I didn't learn was I need to tell them, because with all these test threads, he was like, I, I'm trying to start it. It's not posting. I need to show them that it will hold it in a moderation queue. I will see. You know, is there a way to automate some of the moderation so I can just check five of them? And I, I'm, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot of instructions in these assignment sheets that people have to kind of get themselves through. Mm -hmm. And now you've got a slightly different experience of the discussion board than they might have encountered in other things. What I would suggest you do, mm -hmm. it's a free tool, but I would suggest that you Jing 
how this is all going to work from start to finish so okay. that they can see it okay before they even get into it here's how you you know all of the stuff that you said that you have to show them live how to do citation mm. if you want to blow that time for yourself that's fine but I do would it also do Jing. it in Jing so they can go see that here's how I want you to cite and oh by the way here's what the assignment is going to look like and oh by the way I do something different with the session boards Mm -hmm. for this so class, don't, yeah. you know, here's what it looks like. Okay. Here's what it will look like when you get to the end because I will have moderated it. Here's why I do it. I, you said yeah. that you're very interested in sort of meta right. yeah. information. The Jing can be a meta content Excellent. explanation like of your that. assignment. Excellent. And if you have it up front in the beginning. Because yeah, once I explain to the students why I have them do odd things, then they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So you know, put, that, we'll put that up front in... Katie had a suggestion, suggestion, you know, from her last presentation of a sort of start here button mm -hmm. on your menu where it just explains this is what I do and why. Okay. Here's how I want you to do it. And what it's doing is giving them a chance to say, well, even before I've gotten into this, I can see and hear what you want. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. so. And so with that, I would need a student to log on to do some of that to show that student view of the unmoderated, they're making a post that can't be I seen. I think even if you just showed what you're doing from your end, okay. they'll eventually see it. You should be able to go into the display view if you want to. You could have a different browser that you switch on that okay. a student has logged in so that they can see it. Keep it simple, you know? Right. That's the whole yeah, point of this Jing right. thing is that you, you want to keep minutes, it simple. Yeah. If it gets too long, start over. But I think if you have some of that rationale yeah. up front, Okay. It Sounds may good. help go yeah. through this the stuff. Sounds good. Does that replace an in class overview or does that supplement? This um, the a lot of this overview? supplements John's idea. Um, the in class overview. I still want to do a little physical showing. Sometimes I, I, I think that's fine. I yeah. you know I, I'm just saying reminder. That, you know just. When you're not there to explain why I'm going through these hoops, yeah, they might forget. I think, why you know, I give them a way to play you over again. Excellent. All right, and I understand. Jing a save yourself now. a little bit of time of you know, because that's when we first started seeing people use the Jing. Is that, you know, I'm explaining the same thing over and over and over again. Well, do it once in a condensed version. Go ahead and do it in the class and say, oh, by the way, what I just told you. Here's the Here's the condensed version. I'll show you. Okay. And then you show them in class the video, not the whole thing. Just start the first ten seconds. They'll go back to it and say, "Ah, that's where I can follow." Okay, excellent. Yeah. Especially in three ninety three, we're going to see them every Tuesday. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, so they'll have to be paying attention the first time when you go through the directions. They'll leave it on Wednesday. Like, why do we have to do this? I don't get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and which is sort you know, of what's happening in the why I dropped <laughs> this assignment from the in person um, full on three ninety three right now because they weren't following the reasons or why are we doing it or why is it divided like this and it is because I partially I started it later in the semester than I wanted to instead of having it part of the whole semester but all right thank you any other quick questions we're moving on to Jeff all right, all right. Is he on, is he on he's on